Okay, so I think I can start. Yeah, Prak, can you just write if I can start? Yes, okay. Hey everyone, sorry for this little lag. Uh, you know how it is, 2021, 2020, we all live in this virtual uh, world. So first of all, I wanna thank you for being here. It's really an honor for me to be speaking to you today, uh, you know, at, at such an important moment like this is for, you know, new founders, for people that are just starting, especially with the family, which is amazing. I've been following the family for so many years. Uh, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about, you know, what is this machine learning thing? Like, what is this topic? What it's all about? Uh, and how you can really choose uh, the right uh, machine learning services and the right path uh, in order to bring uh, intelligence to your product or your workflow and really prepare, you know, your business for the future as it scales. There's a quote I really like, and I want to leave this at the beginning instead of at the end, which is predicting the future isn't magic. It's basically artificial intelligence and machine learning working. And I read this once and I never forgot uh, because, you know, I just I just like that phrase. So I hope it makes sense to you, too. So who am I? I'm Marta. I am part of the AWS Startups team. OK, I am based out of Portugal. I'm actually in Lisbon right now, so I can't complain about the weather. Um, I, I call myself Startups, Startups Best Friend at AWS in Portugal. But basically what I do is that I build the bridge between AWS and the entire startup ecosystem here. So venture capital funds, accelerators, incubators, and of course, startups. I've been working within the ecosystem here for many years. Uh, so that's also how I learned about the family many years ago when I was working at Betei and, and about the great support that US founders get from this community. So it's really special to have you here today and really take the most out of these opportunities because these are the ones that really make the difference in the future and you can just you know meet the next person that you should be meeting today, even if it's virtual. So just a little bit more about me. I do not have a technical background at all. So my background is totally in business, communications. Um, but, you know, I started getting fascinated about this machine learning topic every, ever since I, I joined AWS uh, because precisely I'm a very human person and I was very interested about how is this thing about making machines more human, you know? How does this work? And so I started getting a little bit of, um, uh, more into this topic, just like you're doing now. And so, you know, I also kind of, you know, gather this introductory kind of information and content on what this all is. And today I'm going to give you a very introductory session on it because, you know, I want to explain it to you in a way that is simple for you, just like it was, uh, just like I got to learn about it. Okay. Then on a different instance, like if you want to know more in more depth, if you're super interested after today and you really want to, you know, explore further, or if you think your startup is ready to start working with machine learning, then we can also kind of try to deliver something that we do a lot, which is a machine learning office hour for you, for your team, if you're if you if your team already has data scientists. So I'm going to leave my email here at the end and you can just contact me and I'll make sure to set that up for you so we can go in more depth on another way on another day and on a more, you know, technical session one on one. So we all know that machine learning and AI is basically being adopted everywhere, right? And mostly like every industry from enterprises to startups to governments, everybody's speaking about it. So if you, I mean, even if you may not call yourself an AI company, AI, by, by the way, stands for artificial intelligence. I hope you know that, but I'm telling you. Uh, or a machine learning company, whether you are or you are not a machine learning company, you will find many ways in which you can use this technology to make your product more intelligent and create basically a better customer experience or even reducing costs, right? Because machine learning is basically interwined in different areas of your business. So while machine learning has been around for like over 50 years, uh, the cloud is enabling it basically to become bigger, right? And to be at, applied at a larger scale. So the abundance of data in our lives nowadays is crazy, right? And especially in business operations for machine learning, like that's something that is very uh, important. So machine learning models, you know, they're hungry for data, right? And they usually require a large amount of data in order to work, right? And in, this, in the cloud, we can store as much data as we want. So, and it's cheap and it's secure. So basically, 
why not, right? The cloud is the perfect place for you to for you to build the machine learning and for machine learning to grow, right? So the cloud really enabled machine learning to really get further. So because of the cloud, we can access basically virtual unlimited amounts of uh, specialized compute because you have to understand that when you're building machine learning, it needs to sit down on top of a you know, a strong computer, right? And that we call basically the, spe the, the compute power needed for it to grow. And so in 2019, just a, a fact that I thought it was very interesting when I first read about it, IDC, which is an organization that stands for International Data Corporation, and what they do is basically they are the global provider of market intelligence. They estimated that 40% of all digital transformation initiatives in the future will be supported by machine learning and AI. Okay, so for example, customer experience uh, is totally being transformed by this already, right? Whether it's conversational interfaces or smart biometric authentication, or personalization or recommendations, right? Even when you go, for example, to Amazon.com, you know, the very simple fact that things are being recommended for you, that's something that Amazon started doing since the very beginning. So we've actually been, you know, using machine learning since the very beginning. In retail, right, you can create sophisticated demand planning or forecasting models, uh, you know, and, and this dram dramatically improves the accuracy. Automation, you know, making the supply chain management more efficient and and even in healthcare, like we're seeing a really uh, amazing shift uh, moving from pre from reactive to predictive care, you know, including predictive models to accelerate research and so on. So 42% of executives say that AI will drive innovation in their organization. So executives, you know, are currently looking deeply at this. And this is in all areas, like I was telling you. So retail, electric utilities, uh, all that. So it's really something that is being utilized in all those areas. So let's just clear things up for a bit, because for me personally, uh, this was kind of the, one of the questions I had. So I'm just going to tell you very fastly. I promise I'll make my a big effort for this session to be, you know, as interactive as it can. Uh, and but I just wanted to to share this with you. So let's just clear things up a little bit on the difference between artificial intelligence or AI, machine learning or ML, and deep learning or DL. Okay, there are three different things. So artificial intelligence is basically a science like mathematics or biology, okay? And it studies ways in which we can build intelligent programs and machines that can creatively solve problems, okay? Which has like always been considered something that only humans can do, right? So it's basically trying to make uh, machines act like humans or are managing to think intelligently. Machine learning is a subset of that. Um, and basically what it does is that it focuses on the development of computer programs that can access data and use it so that they can learn for themselves. So machine learning is basically the science or the art, like I like to call it, of programming computers so that they can learn from the data that they have. So never forget that in order to do all this, you need to have data, right? Of course. So deep learning utilizes both structured and unstructured data for training. So practical examples of deep learning are, for example, virtual assistants, vision for driverless cars, money laundering. So it's things uh, things that you can't really um, predict, but, but it manages to learn by itself. So to work with machine learning, you need to basically create standardized code recipes for data preparation, uh, model training, model deployment, and all that. So the first thing you need um, to package, uh, so first you need to package hundreds of code recipes and then basically define the order in which they need to execute, okay? Keeping track of code, data model, uh, parameter dependencies between like each of these steps. Then after the models are deployed, you need to write code to continuously model, uh, to continually see monitor, sorry, models and data in production. And then many bot model builders don't have the time, of course, or the experience to create this. So they rely on uh, manual handoffs between teams, which is slow, and this creates like a lot of error, right? So that's uh, where then other solutions come in. 
data prep is basically, as I already told you three times, I think this session, it's the first step of building a machine learning model. So it is really time consuming and involves, you know, a process that is really indif undifferentiated, right? So that's why also AWS comes in on this part and tries to kind of tackle that issue. Uh, and Forbes did a survey back in 2016, which showed that 80% of machine learning engineers, uh, basically they spent 80% of their time, sorry, uh, preparing data, okay? So while data preparation uh, have uh, tools have grown in adoption, uh, you know, the, the process remains until today to be tedious, uh, time consuming, complex. And this is also what we're what we're trying to solve. So our mission uh, basically at AWS is to take our rich experience and expertise with machine learning across the entire Amazon. As I told you, since we started, we've been using machine learning and kind of having a big impact on that. And basically we want to put this capability in the hands of every developer, okay? Of every scientist, of every researcher, okay? So we really want to make this something that is accessible. So said in another way, we want to simplify machine learning if that's possible to do, but we want to simplify it we want to make it easy for all developers to easily build intelligent applications. And then, uh, I mean, there's also then different areas in which AWS then really provides this very um, uniquely. Okay, so I, I wanted just to tell you, um, basically leave this here because it's important for you to understand that basically we, we are currently one of the top rated uh, on Stanford's 2020 uh, deep learning benchmark as like the fastest training time, lowest cost, lowest interference latency, deepest set of security features. So we've AWS is really considered a company uh, and, and a service where you can rely and, and you can really, you know, build your machine learning applications on. So that's why we've we've basically um, you know helped so many startups. I just put these here, but there are so many others that I could that I can mention, and I'll speak to you about one later on during this 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 conversation or this session. Uh, but it's really incredible how many startups have been building their applications and their machine learning uh, practices, uh, for example, on AWS, and then specifically also with services like something called um, something called SageMaker, which I'm going to tell you about uh, later. Let me just take this here. Sorry, because I was I wasn't able to. Okay, yes, now I can see again. Okay, so. Why do uh, why do companies and why do startups in this case choose AWS for machine learning? First, because we provide basically the broadest and the deepest set of machine learning and AI services for your startup. Okay, so AWS is unmatched in the depth and breadth of capability that we can offer to customers. So we we are constantly launching new features and we listen to what our customers are asking for and we're trying to constantly innovate and reinvent on behalf of our uh, customers and our pace is only accelerating okay so i usually say this is still the beginning okay this is still the very beginning of aws services and it's the very beginning of aws with machine learning and then secondly because we really can accelerate the adoption of machine learning with sagemaker okay and sagemaker is basically a managed service that takes a number of the required steps to build, train, tune, and deploy a machine learning model and makes it basically much easier for, for everyday developers and, and data scientists to work with machine learning. So basically it helps organizations of all sizes embrace machine learning and makes it easier for them to, to be able to use it, okay? And basically it makes it possible for you to build a machine learning in weeks or in days instead of months or even years, okay? And, and this really boosts your productivity on bringing machine learning to your applications. And then third, but not least, you really get the confidence of building with a company, of building with AWS, which is the most comprehensive uh, cloud platform, okay? So I just wanted to pass this on to you so that you can then, you know, think if this is something that you're ready to start doing and, 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 and speak to us and speak with us about it. Okay, so uh, it, the AWS machine uh, learning stack. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this because basically AWS provides a stack of tech solutions designed to accelerate machine learning adoptions. Let's move on to that for just for a second. So we think about machine learning as having three stacks, okay? And this will also help you kind of understand 
the structure of how then this machine learning world works. Uh, so we see it in three layers, okay, or uh, we call it the ML stack, but then they have three layers, sorry. And they basically are three different layers, basically for three different types of users, okay? So first, let's look at the big picture of the AWS ML stack. So we see uh, the machine learning stack having these key three layers. In the bottom layer, okay, just below, where it says ML frameworks and infrastructure, are for those that are comfortable building and maintaining their own machine learning platform and their underlying structure, okay? So it's people that are super experienced in machine learning, you wanna build your own things and you're building on top of that, okay? An example of that in Portugal, for example, is a startup called Mbabel, okay? In the middle layer, uh, you have the machine learning services that make it easy uh, for machine learning developers and data scientists to build, train, deploy machine learning models models in a single click with Amazon SageMaker, so with the service that I already told you about before. And then on the top layer, you have the artificial intelligence services, those are my favorite, by the way, that allow all developers to use pre-trained and auto-trained models to add intelligence to any application without machine learning expertise. So that's like for anyone to be able to just, you know, with one click do it. So. At AWS, we basically have teams dedicated to supporting each of these major um, layers, if you want to say it this way, because it's really essential for us to provide customers with, you know, the, the good choice and, and the best choice. So in terms of the infrastructure, it's just important for you to understand that you can choose from a bunch of infrastructure. So see it nearly as a house, you're building a house, you want to have the right compute behind underneath it, you know, depending on what you're wanting to build. Okay. And the compute, the power, the compute power underneath your, your machine learning model, you know, that's very important. That that's why we have such a, a, a large depth breadth of, uh, of, 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 of solutions and of options that you can choose from. Then on the middle layer, so we, we realized basically that a team of expert machine learning practitioners is not for every company, okay? Not to mention that it's super hard to build and manage an entire machine, wor machine learning workflow by yourself. So there's not that many expert machine learning practitioners uh, and basically you have to make it easy every day for your developers and data scientists to build, train and deploy these machine learning uh, models, okay? And that's why we have this middle layer of the stack, okay, to basically try to automatize and make it faster and easier for, 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 for developers and for data scientists to be able to just deploy their machine learning models instead of having to build them all from scratch. So just let's just dive a little bit more here because I do believe that this is an important topic for you to bring with you, okay? I want to make sure that today when you leave here that you feel, okay, we, under we got the message. So it's a long journey in preparation for machine learning, okay? If it takes basically four main steps uh, and a data scientist really needs to go through these steps in order to produce machine learning that is really ready for use. It's complex, it's expensive, and then you need to try it many times, okay? So uh, the first one, uh, developers need to really select which algorithm or framework they're going to use to build their model. Second, they need to train the model on how to make predictions and tune it so that it delivers uh, the best possible predictions. And then finally, they need to integrate the model into their application and deploy their application on infrastructure while they scale. Okay, and again, this is why this is precisely what Amazon SageMaker tries to solve. Okay, and basically, it makes a lot of these steps, these required steps that I was telling you about before, it solves it, 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 it takes care of it. Okay, uh, and it makes everything much easier. So, it brings a lot of the tools together so that you can test, debug, deploy, and all within like one single uh, space. And startups basically use this because of costs, compliance, easiness of use. You know, it's just something that it makes uh, you as a startup, you can't be wasting time. And this makes your life, of course, easier. An example of a company that uses SageMaker, for example, uh, is Coinbase. So they use SageMaker uh, to develop machine learning algorithms uh, for, um, for image analysis in order to defeat scammers. So this is one of the one example of a company that uses SageMaker and how they use it. Also, um, important for you to know, so once you are, you know, once your startup has grown and has 
um, you know, developed and you have your customers and you're proven in the market, you can also basically become part of something called the AWS Marketplace, which is basically an online catalog for independent software vendors and new yourself. Uh, if you are a machine learning startup, you can also access our customers. OK, so think about that in the future if this is something that makes sense to you. Okay, so now let's move to the top of the stack, which again is my personal favorite. So at the top of the stack, we serve developers and companies who want uh, to add solution-oriented intelligence to their applications through an API, okay, through an API call rather than developing and training their own models in SageMaker. And we have a lot of services in this area to do specific things, okay? Um, an example of that, like we have vision, speech, text, uh, basically everything uh, that you can imagine in, in relation to everything related to vision, to speech, to text. We have, uh, you know, you might know Alexa, of course, which is relatively famous if, if we can agree on that. Uh, so it all comes into this part. So Amazon recognition, it was launched in 2016, and it basically allows developers and AWS customers to add computer vision capabilities to their applications. So it, it, it enables you to analyze images and video and really, you know, identify what is on the image and the video, and they, it can do this at scale. So a really cool story that I love is ArtFinder, okay? ArtFinder is basically an online, uh, it's a startup from London, by the way, actually half from London, half from, from the US, half from New York, half from the US, uh, sorry, half from New York, half from London. Um, but it's an online art marketplace and allows thousands of artists to sell directly to buyers. Okay, so we all know that sometimes it is a little bit intimidating to buy art, like you don't really know what to buy or you like things, but then you don't really know what your style is. So basically this startup is helping you do that. So it runs its website and recommendations tools using AWS services like Amazon EC2 and others. But the company, what it does that is super special is that it can match its customers with art that they will fall in love with thanks to their recommendation tools built on AWS, okay? Uh, and since they actually joined us, they claim that they have rev that, that their increase in revenue has increased on a 75% uh, year over year. And this happens, why? Because when you're using ArtFinder, what will happen is that if you um like if if the if if it identifies that you usually like for example paintings with dogs and it identifies okay this is a dog and marta likes paintings with dogs or with cats uh, then it will bring me more recommendations of of, 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 of other paintings with cats. And it uses um, basically Amazon recognition to do that. So that's only just you know an example, a very easy example for you to understand of how Amazon recognition can be used. But there are tons of use cases that I could share, uh, but let's, uh, let's just focus a little bit now on this one. So I think almost everyone knows CBS, right? For shows like The Survivor or The Late Night Show. And they also have one of the world's largest libraries of entertainment content. And what CBS uh, does is that they place significant, really a lot of effort on ensuring that they moderate inappropriate content within their programming tool in order not to offend their global viewers because they have people from all over the world, you know, um, accessing their content and they really do not want to violate regulations of course so amazon recognition comes in here uh, because it really makes it easier for them to detect and take action on user generated photos uh, that really need moderation okay so in summary uh, basically it makes it easier this service amazon recognition makes it easier for you to identify objects people text scenes and activities and like images and videos as well as detect any inappropriate content just very fastly, I'm just going to run through these now. Amazon Text Tract, for example, it's amazing. Basically, imagine you have a written document, like a written paper, like I have here, and it will be able to, you know, export what I have here and just put it in, in writing, okay, so that you can continue working on it. Uh, you have Amazon uh, Transcribe, which basically uh, immediately converts uh, speech to text. So while I'm talking, it's moving on to text. Imagine how special and how important this is, uh, for example, for a doctor, um, especially now during this pandemic times that you can be, you know, with someone on, with someone, a patient and you're, and, every, and instead of having to write the patient's outcome or whatever you need to write about the 
patient's uh, situation, you can speak it out and then it will come into text. So this really helps on, you know, moving things faster. And for example, I really like this one, Amazon Lex. So basically it provides an easy to use a console to guide you through the process of creating your own chatbot like in minutes, okay? Building conversational interfaces into your applications. So you basically just supply a few examples and phrases and Amazon Lex builds a complete natural language model through which your user uh, can interact uh, using voice and text to ask questions, to get answers. And basically it's a complete sophisticated uh, you know, application and, and it, it works very well. Uh, it's also very cost effective. Okay. So with Amazon Lex, there are no upfront costs, uh, no minimum fees. So this is the kind of thing that you can also test. Then you have things like Amazon Polly, uh, which is basically, it allows you to create applications that talk. Okay. And the a very cool thing is that you can create a custom voice for your organization. So if you want things in writing to become put into speech. Uh, so there's so many things uh, like a around forecasting, personalization, fraud, and others, okay? So as I was telling you before, we can go more into depth about this on a machine learning office hour or in with, with, with the startups team here if you want to talk about it. So where can you start, okay? Uh, so AWS basically provides um, support for anyone that is interested in embracing machine learning for the first time or in looking into accelerating uh, their existing uh, machine learning initiatives. So basically, uh, just let's let's just review how AWS supports startups and machine learning. Uh, so basically, what we do is that we work with in three. Uh, we, I call it the ABC: activate, build, and connect. Okay. So activate basically, since you're a young startup, you can activate AWS credits uh, via your incubator, accelerator, or startup organization, or even VC. Okay, if you're linked to a VC. Uh, so you can you know speak to any kind of organization, startup organization that you're connected to for example, with the family, and you can add access to credits, okay? You also get access to then, if you join this community called the Activate community, the AWS Activate community, you then also get access to credits, to, uh, to office hours, sorry, to a bunch of, you know, you, you start getting invited to be a speaker at our events. If you're building something that is interesting and that if you're really, you know, putting yourself in the market in a way that we see is very valuable in the way that you're using our technology. So that comes into the build part. And then the connect part is we at AWS, we have a global team, a global startups team that I'm part of, for example. So we are basically speaking to venture capital funds every day, to customers every day. So we want to help you on your business development. Okay. We want to connect you to the best VCs around the world, to the best uh, companies around the world. And if you're building something that is worthwhile, we want to make sure that you are, you know, getting to your future customers, that you are being seen. And so we really work a lot and in, and very closely with our startups in order to make that happen. Okay, so I just left this here so that in case you want to take a screenshot of this, uh, here are some of the programs that we work with and that in the ways that we support startups from the AWS Activate to machine learning credits, so credits uh, specific to, to, to machine learning. We have the Amazon Partner Network. We help startups connect with enterprises. So... This is, I just left it here so that you could have this information for you. And so what about if you're thinking, uh, okay, so I, my team really doesn't have the skills to start building on uh, machine learning and how can we start? Uh, basically they can start by using, they can really start very easily. Uh, we do have a lot of, you, you, we have something called the Machine Learning University. You can look into that. Okay. If you look online for AWS Machine Learning University, it's free now. So you can have, there are a bunch of trainings there that are super useful. Um, you, we, all, we also have partnered up with Uda City, Coursera, EDX. So you have a lot of trainings there for your teams. And we also have partners from the Amazon Partner Network that can help you, you know, enable your team in order to be able to, you know, learn what you have to learn in order to deploy this. And here it is, exactly what I was saying. So this is the, this is the kind of information that you can get by visiting these uh, content providers that, honestly, I learned so much there. So in order to apply for credits, don't forget, uh, you can contact either me and then I'll pass you on to the right person, or you can just speak to the family. They also have information on this. And 
Don't forget that in order to start building on AWS with machine learning or anywhere, uh, you just, you know, here are, I, I left it here, this here because this basically explains to you the several resources that we have so that you can then just, you know, pick it up and start looking at it. One more last thing just before I end, okay? We have built something called the AWS Startup Academy, okay? It's within something called, something called the AWS Startup Loft. Um, so if you take a picture of this QR code, it will take you to something called the AWS Startup Loft. And within the AWS Startup Loft, you will find a bunch of cool trainings on business, technical, you know, super cool, like uh, simple onboardings um, into AWS and also like how to fundraise and different topics on both uh, even HR. So we, we really deliver very cool sessions that I think you're going to like. So register there. On this platform, you can also request to have a one-on-one -on -one with a tech technical person or with a business person from AWS. So in order to take your, you know, to have your doubts uh, answered. So this was me. Um, I usually like to say at the end that machine learning is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make. This is from someone called Nick Bostrom. Um, so really like look into it get data, you know, start getting into the topic, ask us more questions. I, again, I'm not the perfect person for technical questions, uh, but please reach out to me. You have my email here uh, so that we can then, you know, set an office hour with you and we can connect you to the respective teams inside AWS uh, for startups. And I don't know if we have uh, time for, oh, I'm just in time. Great. I'm just two minutes over. Um, but uh, if we have any questions, I see Kyle Hal. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just coming on uh, actually to say, yeah, we, we're a little bit over our time, so we're going to have yeah, to unfortunately run on to the next session. But Marta, thank you so much thank for you. that, which was a very rich session and uh, I think gave a great overview of of, yes. of all of the, the various things that uh, AWS is doing with machine learning. Uh, thank and so you. thank you very much for joining us. Yes, and please join us on the main stage, right? I know that we need yep, to go. Yep, exactly, Good. exactly. All of our viewers, we're gonna head over to the main stage for the next session. Perfect, Thanks. okay, bye everyone, thank bye you. Bye-bye.